Hello, hello, welcome back. Today in this video, I am going to show you how to paint a simple and loose watercolor beach. Now this week my family was on vacation at the beach and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you how easy it is to paint the beach. Uh, but I did forget my tripod and so I used my son's shoe, but I think it worked out great. Now for all three areas of the painting, the sky, the sea, and the sand, we are going to be using the technique called wet on dry. And it is exactly how it sounds, where I'm taking my wet paint and I'm adding it to a dry piece of paper. I am using this technique by using the side of my brush and swiping across in a side to side motion. Now what this does is the texture of the paper grabs some of the paint and leaves some areas of the paper white. In the sky, this is going to give the illusion of clouds and stormy texture. Your sky can look however you want. The sky that we have today is really stormy and cloudy looking. And along the bottom line of my sky, I'm dabbing off some of the paint because it gives a misty, foggy look. And also it dries that line between the sky and the water so that when I put down this first layer of paint for the water, it doesn't bleed and blend up into the sky. Now for the ocean, we are using blues and greens and I'm going to be using that same technique, the wet on dry, where I am just kind of back and forth with the side of my brush, sweeping it across the paper. And you can see some of that white start to pop out and these white areas on the ocean towards the horizon line are going to be representing the kind of glistening areas on the waves where the sun is catching on the water. As I am getting closer and closer to where I want the sand to be, I am adding more of these white areas of the paper. So I'm doing less paint, lighter pressure with my brush, a little bit more pigmented and not as much water and just really spacing everything out so that it looks like there's starting to be waves with foam catching on the tops of these waves. You don't want to bring the blue color all the way to the edge of where you want your water to end and your sand to start. And so we're going to stop with our water right here, knowing that there is a lot of foam still underneath where the blue has ended, but we're going to kind of outline that with the sand color. So I'll show you that in a second. And when your watercolor is still wet, that's when you can go in and add higher pigmented paints and colors to increase the depth and the contrast. So I did that in the sky and I'll also be doing more of that in the water as well. So I'm taking a golden brown color and I am outlining where the foam and the sand are meeting together on the beach. So this is jagged and uneven. I'm making it a little bit unpredictable, just like how waves on the sand would be. And then I'm adding a little bit of water to my brush and swiping over that line so the edge does not become hard. And again, I will be using that wet on dry technique just to add texture and interest into the sand and to tie everything together. So adding similar textures between all three different elements really brings the piece together and makes it look cohesive. Now I'm taking a darker pigment of the brown golden color and adding it just right underneath our wave. This represents a shadow where the wave is coming along and is on the beach. We can see a little bit of shadow that adds a lot of contrast. Then I'm taking some paper towel and I'm just dabbing around just at the base of where our wave is on the sand to bring a highlight there. This is going to represent how the sand is brighter and wetter right where the wave has come off the sand. And now I'm just using another paintbrush to tap on my brush with the darker pigment of color to create specks in the sand, which creates a lot of texture since sand is very textural. And I accidentally got some where I didn't want it to be. And so I just moved that line of foam up a little bit by adding some more of that darker pigment shadow and just messing around with that area a little bit to fix it up. With 
with barely any paint on my brush, I'm going through and adding a little bit of the brown color into the foam so that it looks as if some of the sand is peeking through a little bit. So it's not just pure white. We want to give the foam some texture too. I'm also going through with the blue color and because it's such a bright color and I didn't want the lines to be harsh, I'm painting a little bit here and there and then I'm just softening it with my finger. Now I really wanted to add some more speckly flecks with that darker pigment of paint because I felt like the sand needed more texture. And if I didn't mess up on another little fleck going in the wrong spot, this would be a five minute video. So let's just pretend that that didn't happen, but you get to see me fix it and you can learn how to do that too. I'm adding a highly concentrated pigment of blue just under some of the foamy areas. This is going to make the foamy areas more significant and look even more highlighted because we're adding some shadow underneath them. I think it's fun when you're painting a landscape to add something that represents life. So you could add something jumping out of the water or even sandals on the beach to create interest. Thank you for being here with me today while we painted this beachy landscape. I hope you can see that it is way easier than it may seem, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.